Hello again and welcome to another Warmer 40k Imperial Guard Tactics video. So before we get into today's video, I just want to say a huge thank you to Levi M. Olson. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, just say thank you for sending in these really uh, cool pictures of his Imperial Guard uh, tanks that he's got and artillery. Um, I really like this scheme. It's simple yet effective. Uh, it's... And I personally have always struggled to do jagged camo lines nice and neatly on tanks. Whenever I used to do it, it used to look like blobs, uh, which is kind of why I stick to straight lines now or flat colours. I, I just I do just struggle with it. It's something I, I'll get better with, hopefully. So I really do appreciate when someone has dedicated a proper good uh, effort and put a lot of effort and a good amount of time into obviously doing a good jagged counterpart, especially on this shadow sword. I really think that's really, really well done. So yeah, I think really a simple yet effective color scheme looks quite impressive. Uh, and yeah, that's great. Thank you very much. So without, if, oh, if anyone wants to send any pictures in to me, uh, go on my Facebook, add me as a friend, Morden Glory. Um, and if, you know, post me some pictures there. If they're cool or unique or I, or I just like them, then I will probably use them in the video and give you a shout out. So there you go. Right, so today's video, I want to talk about Valkyries. Okay, now I sort of touched on Valkyries at the beginning of 8th edition. I've sort of had, you know, I've, I've had a little a brush, a little, little sort of giving them the eyes, the Valkyries. I've always thought they're quite cool, but I've always thought, why take a Valkyrie? You know, when you take a Lieben Russ. Oh, how wrong was I? I have, I now struggle to see where, when I'm building a list, where I'm not going to have a Valkyrie. I am, I've got, got a bit of a love affair going on with them, guys, not going to lie. Um, they're just deceptively good. And they're a real mindfuck unit for the opponents as well. And they really do lull your opponent to a false sense of security. Um, because they, like I said, they're just subtly very good. <laughs> so without, let, you know, without just you know chatting shit, let's get on with the video and um, let's look at what a Valkyrie is. So, firstly, how much does a Valkyrie cost? Well, according to my codec, this costs one hundred and ten points. I don't know if that's changed in FAQ, but I doubt it. Valkyries aren't very common. You know, people love taking vendettas from holdover from 5th, 6th and 7th edition. But Valkyries were always a bit like the red-headed stepchild of the Flyer family. Never, no one ever really took them. But uh, no, now. Oh. So I've got those 110 points. I don't think that's changed. And what do you get for your mighty 110 point investment? Well, bearing in mind you've got to add some weapon systems on here as well. Well, what you get is a strength 7, toughness 7, so quite tough. 14 wounds. Wow, okay, that is good. Okay, 14 wounds, 3 attacks, blah, blah, blah. Weapon skill, 6 plus. Uh, Blizzard skill, 4 plus, uh, which degrades when you get it to below half. So if you get it to 7 wounds or below, it degrades. And then it goes from 5, it goes to five plus to 6 plus. It's got a really nice 20 inch to 45 inch movement, which when degrades eventually goes down to just 20 inches of movement. Uh, the Valkyrie comes with, as standard, a multi-laser and Hellstrike missiles. You can swap the multi-laser for a LAS cannon. You can swap the Hellstrike missiles with two multiple rocket pods. And you may take two heavy bolters. And these heavy bolters are what? Some of the coolest heavy bolters in the whole game because they're door gunners. Vietnam style, baby. Um, if you are running your Valkyrie, and you have taken heavy bolter uh, sponsors. And when you start shooting them at the enemy, you don't say, yeah, get some, get some, and you're not referencing Full Metal Jacket, then please retire from the guard because you're doing it wrong. Anyway, without further ado, Valkyries, right? So, straight off the bat, you do not want to leave this thing in its standard configuration. Okay, this is the mistake I was initially making with them. I was initially looking at this thing and being like, because the Hellstrike Missile is a 72 inch range, heavy 1, strength 8, AP minus 2, D6 damage. And when you're, it's like a melter gun, when you're, uh, you roll 2 dice when inflicting damage and discard the lowest, but at like 72 inch range. So I thought, that's quite good. 
That's like, you know, but the problem is straight away is that it only comes with Hellstrike missiles. It doesn't come with two sets of Hellstrike missiles. That's a real problem, okay? That's a real problem. Okay, because that means your Valkyrie is only firing one shot. Strength 8, AP minus 2. Now, you could add a last cannon in there as well. You could. Uh, but that's, you know, 20 points for last cannon. And the Hellstrike missiles themselves, I think, are like 20 points. I'll double check. But they're not super, super cheap, if I remember. Hellstrike missile. 20 points, exactly. Look at that. Right. So, you take 20 points, you're 110 points, you take 20 points for Lazcan, 20 points for a Hellstrike Missile, well done. You've gone and got yourself two shots. One strength, nine AP minus three D6 damage. One strength, one essentially a glorified crack missile. You know what? Why not just go and buy some fucking Lehman Russ and put a Vanquisher can on it? I'll tell you why you don't do that. Because it's a shit idea. And it's the same thing with Valkyries. You don't want to do that with them. Now, if Hellstrike Missiles... If you took, if you got two of them, and you're able to fire three shots, then that would be really good, because taking into account some of its other special rules, like roving gunship, which we'll get to later, that would make a really, really effective anti-tank uh, choice on a cheap platform. As it is, it's kind of shit. So, how do you want to equip your Valkyrie then? You want to equip it for strafing runs, sort of. You want to equip it for anti-infantry. Keep that multi-laser. Take the multi-laser as a 10-point tax. Okay, It's three shots. It's kind of shit. If you could replace it with a nose heavy bolter, you should do. But you can't. So you take the multi-laser for 10 points. And then you take two multiple rocket pods. You swap out the Hellstrike missiles for two multiple rocket pods. And these are 11 points each. Okay, so 22 points are basically the same points. And then you take the two heavy bolt sponsors. Now that means for the same price, roughly as the tank version, you've got 110 points base, plus 10 for the multi laser, plus 8, plus 8 for two heavy bolters, plus 22 for the two hellstrike missiles. For 8 points more, you've got some serious firepower. Let me explain why. We all know what heavy bolters do. It's three shots, strength 5, AP minus 1. Nice. Multiple rocket pods, I've got 36 inch range. They're assault D6, strength 5, AP minus 1. So basically, what this vehicle now gets is 6 plus 2 D6 heavy bolter shots a turn. A potential for 18 heavy bolter shots a turn. That is incredible. It's absolutely fantastic. Because it gets even better. Because you have the roving gunship rule, which I mentioned earlier. Massively executed link. And what the roving gunship rule does is when you're in hover mode, because this motherfucker can hover, which makes it really good. When you're in hover mode, you add one to all hit rolls made for it shooting attacks. So... This thing just drops into hover mode and suddenly it's hitting on threes with six plus two D six heavy bolter shots. Holy crap. That's a lot of DACA. I re I this thing is awesome for strafing apart infantry. It's absolutely awesome. I've used it against Space Marines, I've used it against Tyranids, I've used it against Death Watch. Which I don't class as space wins because those those terminators and death watch kill teams are really difficult to shift. But my point is, is that these things are incredible. They put out they put out a lot of firepower, and there are ways. And the best thing about them is that they are deceptively strong. Because let me tell you what happens on the first turn you use your Valkyrie. It's probably flying, okay? Because you want you know you don't want it to be minus one to hit. So you fly it around a little bit at first. And you're flying it around. And you're popping off a few shots here and there. But you're not doing a lot of damage. And why are you not doing a lot of damage? Because when you're just flying, you're only hitting a 4+. Plus. 
and when you move with a heavy weapon, you get minus one to hit, which means your door gunners and your motor lasers are minus one to hit, which means they're hitting on fives. And yeah, your rocket pods or assaults, they're, hit, they're hitting on fours, but that's still, it's not a huge deal. And so what happens for sort of the first turn, maybe two turns, depending on how much you want to fuck with your opponent, uh, he just does a little bit of damage. Knocks a wound off a vehicle here. Kills a couple of marines there. And your opponent thinks, it's not a big deal. You know, it's this big, f stupid, fat fly thing. And because it's not a Storm Raven, most people think, oh, it's probably going to have like 12 wounds, 10 or 12 wounds. It's not a big deal. It's not a big threat. I don't need to worry about that. That was his first and last mistake of your opponent. Because what happens is your Valkyrie cruises around very casually in the battlefield just cruises around and when it where, where after a couple of turns when both sides have been damaged and there are a few shattered or damaged units of your opponents but key ones maybe there's some devastators you know that have taken a couple of wounds that you know no longer you know lost the the bolter bitch that absorbs the first couple of rounds and suddenly, you drop into hover mode. Bam. You stay still. Bam. You're hitting on threes. Holy shit. And then, and so suddenly, this thing goes from not doing a lot of damage to just shredding unit after unit. But guess what? It's like turn three. Your opponent's already taken a beating. And then your opponent's caught on a catch right too. Does he start targeting your Valkyrie, which is just shredding his infantry left, right, and center? Or does he, you know, if he does, then he, you know, and he kills it, then you leave him and Russes have got another turn of being unmolested and they just pound him even more. Or he targets the Lehman Russes and thinks, oh, the Valkyrie's had one good turn, but little does he know, that's just now the Valkyrie in rage mode and it starts shredding him again and again. By the time he realizes, you know, he, he can't take two turns of it, but then it's turn four, potentially. He hasn't got enough to really bring to bear to, to kill it. And this thing's so tough that you can just start charging it into things and you don't care if you're charging it into things because you've got the fly keyword. So you just start tying things. It's got a huge basis thing. You just start tying things up left, right and center. And when it comes to your turn, just fly away and keep shooting him. You've got assault pods. Just fly away. Just keep strafing. These things are so trolltastic. They're fantastic. And I haven't even got to the best bit yet, which is you can transport up to 12 guys in this thing and what i like to do i know some people like to put crusaders in there and you just drop like 10 crusaders with a priest just into your opponent's lines and just start going to town on him and i think that's really really cool but the point is is you put you know i like to put plasma vets inside mine uh, or you know, a lot of people which like to put bulgars inside of them the point is is you put your flavor of of deep of you know drop inserted pain into your valkyrie and then when you drop into hover mode this is what i like to do now i know you can disembark at any point and you can grab shoot insert so you can like go 45 inches and then jump out the back and get like a turn one charge i understand all that but the point is is you put your pain train inside the valkyrie if you've got two of them prepare you have for your opponent's tears. And what you do is you when you when you when you drop the key to the to being successful with the Valkyries, what I've learned, is choosing that moment to drop into hover mode. Because what you do is you drop into hover mode, you get your guys out, and then you have created a second front, but you've also just delivered unholy amounts of pain into your opponent. A couple of Valkyries, the couple of Plasma vet squads, like this is what I use. You you know, you use Crusaders, you use Bulgars, whatever you want to use, but this is what I use. A couple of Valkyries, a couple of Plasma vet squads. It's like 500 points. It's not even a huge amount. What you want to do is throw a couple of, like, a company commander in there, or, you know, a, a platoon commander, or two, or take a platoon commander and use inspired tactics, whatever. You know, whatever. The point is, is that you just drop in, and you've got six i like to take six plasma guns and two plasma pistols on my plasma vets you know two squads 
If all we're rolling once to hit, so you're just overcharging for days. So you've got all the plasma in the world for cracking open tough targets, and then you've got all the missile pods and heavy bolters for the shredding infantry. But because your Valkyries didn't do anything turns one and two, because they were just flying around, just doing a little bit of damage, just harassing a flank, your opponent doesn't t treat them as target, priori target priority. And that's the key, okay? And how you get these Valkyries to work is twofold, okay? Threefold. We'll, make, we'll say threefold. Firstly, you have to know when to drop into hover mode to get roving gunship. Yeah, that is so important. Too early, and your opponent will have a lot of firepower left over to just sweep your Valkyries away, okay? And the units inside of them. Too late, and they're not really going to be doing, you know, not going to get their return on investment okay and the third so you know that's the first thing the second thing is you have to have the payload okay valkyries in themselves are, are good they're fine but they get exponentially better by having a payload of um guys inside be that bulgrin start hammering things crusaders start tying things up or plasma fetch just do horrendous damage your choice of pain and the fourth and the third thing is you have to have something which is a bigger threat on the board. If you just got a load of infantry and then a couple of Valkyries, what's going to happen is your opponent is just going to is going to target them with all his anti tanks. So the only thing he can he can target. However, if you've got like two Valkyries and like three or four Lehman Russes or like two or three Lehman Russes and some Hellhounds, and you're getting those other units, you know everyone knows Hellhounds are really good. Everyone knows Liam Russ is really good, but people rarely take Valkyries. They don't really appreciate how you know how good they are, and then, you know, especially when the first couple of turns you're just tickling him. Your Liam Russes have got you've got to have something which is going to distract your opponent. You know, super heavy would be like a really good example. You know, distract your opponent, and then he's so focused on that that your Valkyries get into position without being damaged too much, and then you drop down and commence the pain train. So there you go, guys. That's why I love Valkyries. That's why that I'm looking into using them as an alternative to my Scion platoon. Scion, I, I like to take my Scion uh, brigade where I take like three squad Scions, two command squads, two Penvester Primes. That's a nice sort of 400, 500 point package of Doom. This is the same thing, but it's not quite as drop and suicide. This thing drops in and then consistently just hammers your opponent. Thank you for listening. I want loads and loads of feedback on what you guys think about Valkyries. And, you know, that's great. So thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.